Looking from Belmont Intermediate, well, we have gate crashed a party tonight, and it's the kids' party. It's a, the annual disco here at the school, but it's a parents' party tonight as well, because today, parent power won out. The mainstay of the government's education policy unveiled in the budget is gone. Now, since the proposal to increase class sizes came in, you had teachers, parents, everyone was protesting, taking to the streets. Now, in a moment, I'm going to talk to some of the parents here at Belmont Intermediate. We're going to talk to the principal. We're also going to talk to the minister who did that famous back down today. But first, let's have a look at what got us into all of this. I'm the minister and the buck stops with me. With the absolute greatest respect, yes. you pose a lot of questions. Do you have any answers? I do have a lot of answers. So let, let, let's... The answer is this, it's not simple. Well, class size itself is not correlative to achievement. Role growth, go growth goes up and down. I mean, I, for instance, went through primary school in a class of 42. This backlash has forced the government to today cap the number of teachers a school can lose at two. We now have made a commitment that they will be protected against it being any greater than two full-time teaching equivalents. It's a smokescreen uh, for the huge blunder they've made, which is making class sizes bigger. So you backtrack. Well, we were always going to provide transition. Mr Speaker, I don't have the exact figure to hand. <laughs> they are tough choices. Hiki Aparata says there will be no back down. That's not on the table. That's not on the table. Um, Could it be? No. What's on the table is how we raise student achievement. Well, I think that there's been quite a lot of heat and not so much light. You have based all of this on the belief that larger classes don't no, make that any is not difference. True. No, that is not true. We are reversing the decision in respect of class ratios. We will maintain them as they are now. I'm the Minister and the buck stops with me. Well, the buck stops with her, but who put it on her lap? It was, of course, the parents people. With me now, Claire, Linda and Guy. Claire, how important was this issue to you? Oh, it was really important, because I think intermediate is a key stage, and intermediate schools are going to be affected seriously. And 37, 38 kids in the class is a huge number of kids to teach. Linda, had you ever... Take, got involved in, in issues like this before? I've never felt so compelled to send communication to a minister ever. And she actually responded, or someone responded within 48 hours, which I was most impressed with. But I'm a classic example of a parent of a child who struggled and found challenging the mainstream subjects. And when he came to this school especially and did the technology subjects, his buns were just fried. You know, he was keen, he was eager to learn. So this was going to threaten what Absolutely. was happening in your family? Absolutely, it was big priority. Well, Scott, you've got it a bit both ways. You're a teacher and you're a parent yeah. uh, and a technology teacher, so your job was, 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 un was under threat. Yeah, it was. Did you think you could turn around what the government was thinking? I think so. It was, it was always going to be a tough one, but um, it's really, really good to see that common sense prevailed. And uh, I think just in this time of need, really, they should be increasing funding rather than cutting it. And um, intermediate's a great experience. Oh, good luck on that one. OK, listen, you wrote for the first time. The first time she wrote. We're going to talk to Heke Parata shortly. What do you want to say to her? Go to the schools and have a look and see what happens here and how eager these kids are in these technology subjects. Um, I agree with enhancing and, and, and also having quality for teachers, early childhood, but shouldn't early childhood also be fun and then the hard work starts at school? Parents have a responsibility as well. So put it into intermediate school. Claire, do you feel like you've had a victory? Does it feel good? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're really thankful. It's been turned around. It's fantastic. Get in there and join the kids later on. Well, of course, the principal here, Justin Somerville. Now, Justin, was it the parents? Was it the unions? Who pulled this off? Well, I think ultimately it's been it's been the support from our community. It's, it's the parents that have got involved, um, and I speak for for all schools across this country. The parents have got behind this. Uh, parents have their views about national standards. They have their views about performance pay. Um, but in this one, when we were reducing class sizes and taking away quality programs from their kids, that really hits at the the heart. So that's why they got involved. But there's been issues in the past that have affected affected schools and affected parents. The response this time seems different. Yeah, because you know, as as I mentioned, you know, you've got these programs that we can provide at intermediate schools. There's specialist programs we put money into resources. We've got a specialist science room, performing arts space. The kids are engaged in those uh, um, classroom programs, and they absolutely love them. And we're just, you know, thankful that this is a decision that's been made. 
What difference is this going to make to your school? The, 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 the back down the day, what's the practical difference going to be? Well, ultimately, we can we can continue to provide those programs. We can have specialist teachers running those programs and it won't be homeroom teachers who have got to pick up science, uh, music and art, which is a you know, heavy burden to carry given everything else they have to deliver in the curriculum. OK, Heke Parat is standing by. What's, what would you want to ask her? Or what would you want to say to her? Um, you know, in some respects, uh, I'm thankful that they've thought about this and they've taken into consideration the feedback that they've received from the community across New Zealand um, and they've made a change. It's a, it's a huge relief. It's a, it's a good decision and it's the right decision. OK, well, I think the Minister is standing by there in the beehive. And, of course, um, you know, the reason... The reason behind the flip-flop, was it the people power? Did they just reconsider the, the wiseness of the decision? Either way, it has been an embarrassing turnaround from the government today, but one we've heard the parents and the teachers do appreciate. Hekia Parata joins me now. Thanks for joining us, Minister. Thank you. Minister, OK, <coughs> you have been on this programme. I've seen you elsewhere saying this policy will not change. It did change today. Was it the power of the people that forced you to change your mind? Yes, it was never our intention that um, this particular component of our overall education plan would affect um, parents and, and, and kids in the way that it has. Over the last 13 days it's become really apparent that the trade-off that I posed it as, as part of my budget announcement, was just not a trade-off that um, parents were willing to accept. We've listened, we've heard, we, we respect that genuine concern and yes, I have reversed the decision about class sizes. Is it tenable for you, Minister, to stay in your job given the fact you defended that policy so staunchly, you said you would not back down and you've been forced to? On this particular component I have and it is because we have heard and also because it was becoming a distraction from our overall education plan, Mark. Our overall education plan has always been about raising student achievement, about ensuring that all five out of five of our kids can have a successful educational experience and that is what our plan has always been about and as part of that it's about raising the quality of teaching and of professional leadership. At the point that this particular part of it was a distraction, was causing anxiety to parents, we've recognised that and I've announced today that we are reversing that decision. Where does that leave you? Does that leave you, though, as a lame duck minister? Because next time you go in to discuss things with the unions, they've got one up the belt already. Look, I'm absolutely passionate about education and I'm passionate about ensuring that the one in five students who are currently being left behind are not left behind. What we've heard is that across the sector everyone is committed to raising student achievement, that um, class size is critical to that, but just as your parents there today, tonight, are saying, yes, they do agree with the raising of quality of teaching, that's what our focus has been. This was becoming a distraction. Now we need to get back onto that focus. OK, put the distraction aside. Do you still believe you were right? The policy was a right one. Well, um, we characterised it right from the outset that it was a trade-off and it was a trade-off that we were consciously making and parents have said it's not a trade-off that they are prepared to accept and so have teachers and we have heard that and we have reversed that decision. A lot of people have, have, have looked at you, Heki Parata, and said, very sure-footed, uh, someone who is going to go a long way. How did you get wrong-footed on this? Look, um, in... Uh, <laughs> In the overall, let's be clear, the, the amount of investment that we have put into vote education is $9.6 billion. That is the biggest it's ever been. It's the, an increase for the fourth time in a row, despite fiscal times. And while this particular component was set to um, give us a greater flexibility of $174 million, in the round, the focus has to be on that greater picture and on that $9.6 billion investment. And that's what I'm okay. focused on. Okay, I'm sure I'm sure you are focused on that, but at the time you said these savings had to be made with the class size. I think you're left with a, a shortfall of about 114 million. What are you going to cut to make that up? 
Well, that's something that we're going to look at over the uh, next uh, weeks um, because we need to see what is the best way that we can achieve this because you are quite right, this does come at a cost. Um, we have the opportunity uh, to have a pre-commitment against Budget 2013, but that will be a fallback position. So we will be scrutinising this and one of the casualties of this is the $60 million that we had put aside to invest in initial teacher education and in the pre-principalship qualification. So we're going to have to look and see how we can continue to do that because our objective remains the same. It is about how we raise student achievement for all of our kids. OK, just, just, just quickly, are you going to come and meet the parents like the, the ones here today are asking you to? Oh, look, I am out uh, every week in schools across the country. I was in Tolaga Bay yesterday celebrating the transit of Venus and how that community has been able to teach science, maths, drama, art, all as part of their curriculum. So yes, I am certainly going to be out meeting parents, meeting schools, and tomorrow I will be meeting all of the sector organisations as well. Okay. And they'll be still teaching those subjects, of course, after today's turnaround. Heke Prada, appreciate your fronting up tonight.